It's Wednesday, July 21st, and the time for your Bobby yesterday morning is of the health authorities are reporting several new COVID-19 clusters a week after curfew and other measures were reintroduced following a spike in cases. Emmanuel Joseph tells us more. Without giving specifics at this stage, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Kenneth George said on Tuesday that clusters in several families were also challenging for authorities. So the three areas are churches, businesses, both large and small, and then at the more individual level, persons within their homes. And that's and and when we and and if we are going to suggest strategies, it's going to be along those lines. We are rehabbing most um, challenges at the moment. Dr. George warned Barbadians that the country also recorded about seven COVID cases of visitors who came through the Grantley Adams International Airport in the past few days. He also disclosed that the previously discovered clusters remained areas of concern. The big business cluster still active. There's another business very active. There is a family in St. George. There is two families in St. Lucie, or a very large family in St. Lucie, plus a business house in St. Lucie. We have some other cases that we are trying to link to other major groups, but we are trying to get a hold of the situation. The chief medical officer cautioned that as contact tracing intensifies, there may have to be some alterations to the current directives based on what is happening on the ground. Emmanuel Joseph for Barbados Today. A major restructuring of Barbados' tourism product is on the cards to improve its competitiveness. Word of this from a Minister of Tourism and International Transport, Lisa Cummins, who also revealed that the $70 airport service charge paid by CARICOM travelers would be extended to include other regional travelers. She also disclosed that there would be a further review of the underutilized Barbados Employment and Sustainable Transformation Program. Minister Cummings made the disclosure as she responded to questions during a State of the Industry media update at the Barbados Hilton on Tuesday. Cabinet has agreed that there is to be a 50% reduction in the airport service charge to regional travelers. That brings us uh, pretty much in line with what you have been hearing coming out of other markets, in particular, I believe one market has already announced, it was Antigua, that there is a 50% reduction. Barbados, at the level of cabinet, has also agreed to that significant reduction. That is meant to reduce um, the, 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 tar the, the, the taxes on interregional travel. So that's one. Uh, we are preparing, PS, uh, I believe we are preparing to take it up on Thursday. Uh, next Thursday, this Thursday or next Thursday, one of the two, a full price-based competitors analysis for Barbados where we will look at a comprehensive review of the industry. So what we have started to do is to look at the tourism sector as comprehensively as we can, both structurally as well as from a price competitiveness perspective. So we are preparing and we've had the first draft of the paper. It's been sent back for some further additions. So we are looking at what is the price sensitivity of the Barbados tourism product relative to our competitors. So that includes a range of analysis. With respects to the BEST program, Minister Cummings revealed that it was recently shifted from the Ministry of Finance to her ministry, the Ministry of Tourism. We will be coordinating with the various agencies. We are preparing to make further changes to the BEST program now that it is uh, being led by the Ministry of Tourism and it will include potentially, the, not potentially, we have agreed that it will include the expansion of the membership of the Oversight Committee to include labor so that there is a representation coming from workers and also we will be looking at how the disbursements are, um, are being undertaken in the various elements of the program. So there are about three elements of the program we have started to review. Employee re-engagement, the number of workers that have been re-engaged relative to the overall capitalization of the program. The transformational investments, which are in the pipeline. There are approximately $16 million in transformational investments that are envisaged. And these include largely things like digitalization, waste 
waste management and disposal systems, solarization, and so on. Those are included in there. And then, of course, you have the working capital component. So we are presently breaking down the data to see how the program is performing relative to its overall purpose and its intent. And on that basis of the analysis, we will be making recommendations on potential changes. It is A new piece of legislation is being drafted to address the issue of predial larceny. Agriculture Minister Indaware made the disclosure on Tuesday as he addressed farmers at the beginning of talks to iron out a new set of protections and safeguards to stamp out crop theft. The minister said, based on reports from farmers, predial larceny is costing the industry millions of dollars annually. And he stressed that his ministry is committed to using the proposed legislation along with all available technology, as well as the assistance of law enforcement, to crack down on perpetrators. In dealing with this piece of legislation, I have determined as minister that I would like for us to be able to use technology as far as possible to be able to give us certain guarantees. One, that any produce being sold to the public, be it by a vendor, be it in the supermarket, be it in a mini mart, be it in a shop, in a community, or wherever, that that item should be traced back to a farm and indeed a farm gate. That being said, I strongly recommend it that we have some form of traceability that will transform this sector into one that is driven by technology and into one that embraces technology for all of our deliverables. It therefore means that our farmers and our farming community and equally our vendors and stakeholders must play a role in embracing what we are considering to be the way forward. Opposition leader Bishop Joseph Atherley has urged the government to be cautious in the way it uses other countries' military forces. Speaking during debate in Parliament on the Defence Amendment Bill 2021, Bishop Atherley said while he understood that the military could be used in aiding humanitarian efforts at times, it was not the main purpose of the Barbados Defence Force or the Coast Guard. When I express that we exercise some caution with respect to the use of the defense force on ground and in civilian exercises in Barbados. This is not an assault on the government for how they've handled recent crises. This is not an attack on the defense force in terms of how its men and women have been deployed. I'm simply saying that sometimes it can be a very thin line between military duties and the military function and military role and doing, providing humanitarian assistance and service in times of crises. If it happens too often by force of circumstance, uh, there's always the danger that it becomes quite an accepted thing that the actions and functions and presence of the military personnel are um, so they're so familiarly seen and, and regularly engaged that it becomes an accepted part and parcel of normal life. And I don't think that it is, and I don't think that it is intended or even hoped to be. And while I commend and credit them for the service they provide to our nation and to other countries about us, I also ask that we be cautious as a government and as a people in terms of how we manage that sort of intervention by military forces in everyday civilian matters um, because we do not want to cross um, the line. There's regional and international news after this short break.
Barbados Today, news you can trust. The news from the region, St. Lucia's ruling United Workers' Party has released its manifesto, promising a series of measures should it retain power following the, the July 26th general election. More in this HTS News Force report. Rosalie MP Leonard Spider-Man Tooth made the remarks when he addressed the crowd of supporters in his constituency on Tuesday where the party officially revealed its manifesto to the public. The financial contribution towards amenities of the vulnerable is part of the Shastney administration's 5 for 5 manifesto. We are going to ensure that we provide assistance to the unemployed. We're going to give them a contribution of $75 towards their light bill, a $200 voucher for food, is it 30 or 50? 30 dollars towards their water water bill and we are also going to assist those of them who have children with bursaries uniforms and other assistance to enable their children to go to school prime minister alan shastney disclosed that a youth manifesto will soon follow our five for five program is designed to make sure that nobody in saint lucia is left behind the people who are vulnerable in our society are single parents who are unemployed, the elderly and the people with special needs. We will make sure that you can join the Flabo train and enjoy a new St. Lucia that everyone can benefit from. And finally, authorities in the U.S. are reporting a rise in COVID cases across the country, fueled by the highly contagious Delta variant. More from Reuters TV. The fast-spreading Delta variant now accounts for more than 80% of new COVID-19 cases. This is according to top U.S. infectious disease expert Dr. Anthony Fauci, who spoke on Capitol Hill Tuesday during a Senate hearing. COVID cases are sharply higher across the country, and deaths are rising too of nearly 48% from the previous week. But Fauci said so far, vaccines are holding up against the threat. The fact is that, however, and the importance of vaccination, is that our vaccines that we're using in this country are very effective against this variant, particularly, I point out, to the situation regarding advanced disease leading to hospitalizations and deaths, where it's still well in the 90% of effectiveness, but millions of Americans are still not vaccinated, causing alarm among U.S. health officials who are urging Americans to get their shots. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.